Hey, Deserving Listeners, 90 Day Fiance, a new season. Let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. This is the Psychology in Seattle YouTube channel. Remember that everything I say is completely speculative based on very little information. Let's watch. No quiero un apartamento, don't say, como se dice, temporary? Temporal. Sí. No quiero por solo un año. Maybe quiero por más tiempo. Por más tiempo. Okay, so Danielle just landed in Dominican Republic and is now telling Johan that she wants to permanently live in Dominican Republic. And so let's see how this conversation goes. Ethically, morally, I would say it's the right thing to do to say, hey, I know we originally agreed to come to the States after a while, but I was thinking about maybe this other thing. Could we maybe talk about that? Maybe there's some compromise or maybe I could convince you or I don't know, some kind of collaborative process rather than just telling him how it is. Like she's the full, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> like she has full control over whatever the two of them do. So let's see, maybe she'll collaborate. Let's watch. Mi amor, no quiero mi país. ¿Cuándo? Nunca. 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 No solo quiero un año aquí, quiero vivir siempre aquí. Okay, it's not going great so far. Uh, although she is just phrasing it like, I don't want to go back. So maybe she's just beginning the conversation about it. He seems to be taking it well. I mean, maybe she knows that he's open to it and he's flexible in this way. Let's watch. Pero, ¿por qué? Yo quiero una vida con sol, con familia, con paz. Two thumbs up to Johan that I think at the very least, this isn't what he was hoping for. And from what I understand, a lot of people on the show are wanting to come to the States because at the very least, they perceive it as providing with a better life. So I think he wants to come to the States. But instead of reacting, he asks a question. And, and honestly, I wish I was more <laughs> like Johan in this way. Uh, often I'll look back at uh, conversations that I have in life with my wife or on, even on this podcast. And if I hear something that kind of concerns me or bugs me, I tend to jump all over it <laughs> instead of slowing down and one of the best things you can do to slow down is just keep asking questions you're hearing something that's concerning and instead of just jumping down someone's throat you're you say like tell me more about this i really wish that i did that more often so i'm going to try to learn from johan here una vida tranquilo mi sueño es no voy a nueva york yo quiero vivir aquí Okay, so he's starting to express that this is not what he wants, but he's saying it kind of in a passive way. It could be possible that he was socialized or maybe even because of cultural oppression, he feels like he can't speak more directly. I don't know. Maybe this is a Dominican thing where people are a little bit more passive, a little less direct. I don't know. I have no idea. But he is saying, well, originally you said you wanted to live here for a year. That's a different phrase than originally we both decided that we were only going to live here for a year. So is it possible that she originally told him, well, I, th I think I might just live here for a year and then we'll go back to the States. And he was like, okay, instead of putting his stamp down on, here's what I want is yes, just for a year. And then we go back. And if anything different happens, like I'll be upset or something like that. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying not to jump to conclusions, but the way that it looks, it looks like Danielle is being self-centered, but let's watch. Porque estaba en COVID. En COVID es diferente. Toda la gente va a otros países, otros pueblos. Después COVID, la gente está en Nueva York. So ahora, todos los apartamentos es mucho caro. Okay. <laughs> 
she's talking about how rent's expensive in New York City. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, there's a lot of other places in the United States that would uh, allow you to do your job. I mean, she's a history teacher at a school. I think there's a, a sharp demand for teachers in schools. And two, she's a yoga teacher. I don't know how hard it is to get a business like that going. I can't imagine it's easy, but after being on a show like this. But anyway, uh, it's like, yeah, rent is has always been expensive in New York City. So uh, you just go 20 miles outside of New York City and the rent has got to just plummet in comparison. I'm just going to take a guess. I, I don't know that. But anyway, so let's see how they manage this. So, it's fine that, she, again, I said this before, it's fine that she doesn't want to live in New York City. It's even fine that she's changed her mind. She doesn't want to live in the States and she just wants to live in Dominican Republic. Or at the very least, she just wants to see what it's like for a number of years. It's fine if she wants that. But to impose that and to bulldoze someone, that's another thing. Ojalá para no vivir allá. Pero en realidad ya no entiende el vivir aquí en en República Dominicana. Aquí, en mi país, tú trabajas años y años y no tienes nada. Aquí, el sueldo que uno gana es como para vivir el día a día. Okay, so according to him, he's, and this is what I've heard from other people in Dominican Republic, is that the economy is not great. So, okay, in New York City, it's expensive, but your economic opportunities are commensurate with the rent, or at the very least, if you just moved outside the city, you're able to earn enough so that you're not living day by day. He's not saying paycheck to paycheck, he's saying day by day. And I think that that is true for a lot of people. It, it kind of depends on where you are in the income strata of Dominican Republic. But for a lot of people in Dominican Republic, yeah, it's literally, I don't even know if we're gonna be able to eat tomorrow. I don't know if we're going to be able to survive this week with our family. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get medical help for my mother who is suffering from what I think might be cancer. I don't know, but I can't even get, and I don't know if this is true for Dominican Republic for everyone, but I do know that for countries in that area, it can be that way. And so, sure, it rent is high in New York City, but you can at least get a job that will allow you to pay for something. Whereas in Dominican Republic, the best job you can possibly get will... Now, maybe for her, and I'm guessing that, or I'm hoping that she has this in her head, that, well, if I do online courses for yoga and whatnot, and I can't remember what kind of other online things, I can have clients all over the world that can pay prices that are American prices, right? I can charge American prices for online yoga, but I'll have expenses in Dominican Republic that are very, just a fraction of what they would be in New York City. And I can support us both. Maybe that's what she's saying. You know, I, I could see that being a viable situation. But again, we're about to end the episode, so I, it sounds like we're not going to get a resolution here. But the way she approached this was very flippant. It was like, I mean, she ex she gave more explanation to her friends that she was wanting to stay in Dominican Republic permanently than she did for Johan. I mean, for Johan, she's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm, we're just going to stay here for the rest of our lives. Anyway, what should we have for lunch? Meanwhile, Johan's life, I think, is just completely completely altered. Everything's just completely flipped on its head. So I think that's what we're seeing, but I don't want to jump to conclusions. Es mucho caro. Trabaja mucho. Todo el día, cada día. Y no tengo nada. Y tú no hablas inglés. So tú no puedes tener un, un trabajo Ahora con no. dinero. Pero cuando tú aprender. Ahora. <laughs> Ocho meses en el pasado, tú dices. So the vibe of the conversation is now that he's a ridiculous human being because he doesn't know English. And I don't know his circumstance, but learning another language is hard. You need a lot of extra time, right? You don't usually get paid to learn another language. And I'm just going to take a guess and say that he has to work a lot in order to survive, plus resources in his town or whatever. I don't know. But she's saying that look we're just not gonna we're not gonna do that we're not gonna no discussion it's it's never gonna happen we're not living in the united states your life is completely altered i mean there's a chance that 
half the reason why he married her was because he wanted to go to the States. I mean, that is a known thing. And for people uh, like myself, I don't really understand that because in, in my privileged position in the world, that's never been a consideration. That's never been a thought. I've been born and raised, my entire family born and raised in the Seattle area, and I don't need to think about such things because my town has opportunities. I've always had opportunity, and I've always had a safety net family and welfare and all that kind of stuff to back me up if something went wrong, right? So I've never had to worry. I've had the privilege of not being able to worry about that. Other people, they don't have that privilege. I don't know about Johan, but you know we've seen other people. Rose always comes to mind in the Philippines where you have limited water supply, limited electricity, limited internet connection, limited security, limited police to help you, limited fire protection, limited uh, privileges, limited just everything in life, limited food, limited everything. And so you are given an opportunity to fall in love with someone and make it to another community, especially if you have kids like Rose did, where you can actually provide for your child and have a, it can be the difference between a, a very, very difficult life of struggle or a regular life of struggle in the United States. It's not like living in the States is without any struggle, but you know, you're not struggling to survive day to day. And so for him, he's mildly pushing back. So I don't know, maybe he doesn't care that much about coming to the States. Maybe he kind of cares, but he is flexible or he's very nice and passive or I don't know, or trying to work the situation right. He, cause he, I don't know. I, I didn't watch the other season of love and paradise to know their dynamic, but there's a chance that he knows that if he pushes something bad will happen just the way that Daniel comes across. But anyway, her arguing point is, well, you don't know English. So, uh, uh when are you going to learn? And he says, um, Oda now. And she scoffs it. I mean, just, just think about the way she reacted to him as her wife. So yeah, that dismissiveness, <laughs> that kind of scoff and and rolling of the eyes, it's not a good sign, especially in this context. The conversation, it, it should be her going, oh my God, Johan, love of my life, I'm so sorry, but I've changed my mind. And I would love it if you would give me a chance to convince you that we should stay here. Now, she doesn't have to beg him or something. She doesn't have to crawl on her knees, but she should acknowledge that her desire to do this would be very disruptive to his future. It might be disruptive to his entire family, I don't know, but for a lot of people like this, for them to make it to the United States and actually even just earning a, a regular low paying job uh, allows them to send a little bit of money back to their family, you know, think of the uh, Suelus and the Roses of the world, that could make or break a family, that could literally give a family the ability to not live day to day, could give the opportunity for the family to get medical attention uh, for things or you know, just regular kinds of surgeries that in the United States you can just you know, typically get from your insurance. But anyway, so for her to just be so flippant about it, it, it just, it, I don't know, I, I, I'm trying to reserve judgment, but it, there's, it, it looks like it just screams just this loud siren beacon of privilege. <laughs> it just looks that way to me. I don't know. I could be missing something. I, I gotta withhold I gotta withhold judgment. What do they say? Yo he visto gente que se han ido eh, irse de aquí de la nada. Ese es uno de mis sueños y Daniela viene y me está dañando mi sueño. Okay. So I was wondering, I'm like, either he's really nice or he's scared of her reactivity or he is flexible. He's not just flexible. He is telling us it's his dream to move to the United States. Now, you could argue that it's a 
not very a just justifiable dream. You know, there's a lot of propaganda, Hollywood propaganda, I suppose, that makes America look better than it is. A lot of people will on the show come to the United States and live. You know, think of someone like Natalie and Mike. Mike and Natalie. Natalie's like. I thought America was more interesting and dynamic, and we just live in the woods. <laughs> you know? And and other folks like Jovi and Yara, these kinds of people, where they come to the States and just like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And yeah, I could imagine that being a very uh, rude awakening to the reality of what it is to live in the States. I mean, you know, the United States is a varied and what you know the very big country lots of different places to live every country has a lot of different cultures and a lot of different areas and there are pros and cons you know and there are pros and cons anyway so but it's his dream and i'm guessing she knows that maybe she doesn't i don't know i i wonder if she bulldozes and he doesn't speak up it's kind of looking like that might be the dynamic because there's a possibility that she would bulldoze le- less if he were to speak up and say, like, like one way he could respond in this moment would be like, okay, so what I'm hearing is that you want to not live in the States and you want to permanently live in Dominican Republic. That was not what we agreed upon, so we need to continue talking about it. I respect that you want to do it, and, you know, maybe we can work out something. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm going to shut it down completely, obviously, because I love you and I want to listen to you. But I want to tell you, this is not great. And it's been my dream. This isn't just small. This isn't just a like a little fl- you know, fleeting thought that I've had over time. I've been wanting to do this my entire life. And my entire family depends on me doing this. And I've been telling everyone I'm going to the States and everyone's been cheering for me. And yeah, Maybe it'll be tough. I don't speak English yet, but I plan on learning, and maybe it'll be hard, and maybe I don't know what it's like, but this has been a dream of mine, and I want to try it. I want to see if we can make a life there, and if it doesn't work, then maybe we'll come back, but can we talk about this at least? Because I don't want to just have you make a decision, and it's like, well, I guess that's it. I mean, this is a partnership, so let's try to work together. I don't hear him saying things like that. He's just quietly asking questions, and then in the one-on-one interview, he's He's saying things. Now, I've treated couples like this where it's very easy to blame the Daniels of the couple where they bulldoze because it's obvious. But the Johans of the relationship play a role. The Daniels are more responsible for the dynamic because of their bulldozing, but the Johans play a role in allowing it to happen, encouraging it to happen, not giving the Daniels of the world a chance to fully embody and understand and feel what their partner is feeling. Because, you know, imagine you're bulldozing in life and everyone just sort of has a blank look on their face. You're just like, well, this is what I want to do, so I'll continue doing that. Whereas if people are grimacing and going, wait, no, what are you doing? You're hurting my feelings. You know, we're going to figure that Danielle has a heart and she has empathy. So she would react to that, I would assume. So maybe the issue is that dynamic where she needs to stop bulldozing, but to a lesser extent, but still significantly so, he needs to start speaking up. How old are you? Eight months in the past, what did you say? He visto gente que se han ido, eh, irse de aquí de la nada. Ese es uno de mis sueños y Daniela viene y me está dañando mi sueño. Porque eso no fue lo que acordamos, eso no fue lo que hablamos. I mean, there's even a chance that from the sound of it, he wanted to immediately go to the States, but they compromised by saying, okay, we'll live in the Dominican Republic for another year. That's kind of, I don't know what's happening, but I'm making a lot of assumptions. But anyway, so it sounds like he's actually going to speak up. So let's see how he gets this across. And he starts with, if you say something, you should stick to the plan. Okay, that's pretty. I would recommend if I were there for him to speak from the heart of, honey, it is my dream to go to the States. It means everything to me. When you and I fell in love, I'm in love with you. That's number one. Number two, I want to go to the States. That's a a nice perk of the fact that I fell in love with you, but it is a big part of my life goal. My life goal was to find my soulmate. That's you. My second life goal 
is to make it to the United States. And I agreed to stay in DR for another year, but I was hoping to go to the States. I know people who have, he talked you know earlier, I, I know people, friends of mine who have gone to the States and they have built their life from nothing, even without knowing English at first, but they worked hard. And it is a total dream of mine to send money back to my family, to set up my kids' life so that they can live a better life in the United States. I know that everything isn't perfect there, but it's a lot better than it is here. And take it from me, I live here. <laughs> I know what it's like to be here. So please, please let me do this. This is a big deal to me. So it, he's being more passive. He's saying, if you say something, you should stick to the plan. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad point. But another way of even just saying that sentiment is, if you promise me something, you should stick to that promise because you know it's more personal. It's more embodying it, giving her a chance to feel the gut punch that this is. All right, well, if you didn't know, we have an audio podcast that you can listen to on a podcast app. We also post the audio episodes on YouTube if you're interested. I don't think we post every single episode, but we usually do. But it's kind of nice to just have your earbuds in while you're doing chores, listening to different podcasts, of course, including our podcast, if you're interested, called Psychology in Seattle. And everyone else, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really, really do.